Okay, so to start with, I made a new component, called it mini socket wrench, and I turned off all of the other components so they're not visible, so that I can focus on just this one. Okay, so to begin, I'll make a sketch. Okay, now I'm going to make the outside of the wrench first. So I'll make a circle. Don't need to measure it right now. Okay, and now I'll add some lines. There we go. I'll add some dimensions. Now I'll dimension this based on my print nozzle, which is uh, 0.6 millimeters. Um, print nozzle width and now to start with I'll do times I'll do times seven. Why not? So that'll be seven nozzle thicknesses for the handle. And now in order to center this handle, I'll select there, select the origin. So I have a dimension there and I wanna make that dimension half of the total dimension that results in centering. Okay, now to determine the length of the handle. That's an okay place to measure. And we'll start with 21. Now these blue lines here, you'll notice that some lines turn black, some lines are blue. Blue means that is, it is unconstrained, so that means it can still move. And so what I want to do is add measurements so that it can't move, so I know everything is going to stay just the way I've designed it. Okay. And a measurement to here. There we go. A measurement to here. Okay, and actually what I what I want to do, I'm gonna delete this. And I'll go ahead and escape out of dimension tool, select that circle, delete that. And I'm going to make a hexagon. And they give me a polygon tool. And because I'm interested in the distance between the flat edges, I'm going to use a circumscribed polygon, polygon around a circle. Like that. And OK, 
Okay. And now what I'm going to do is uh, um, I'm going to create some parametric dimensions that I can use in this sketch. It'll make things easier later on. Okay, so I'm going to escape out of the polygon tool and I'm going to go here to the parametric list, add a parameter, um, I'll just call it wrench size, wrench width. Now, because I've already measured, I know that uh, 9.8 is probably exactly what I want. So what I did is I measured the, uh, the actual nuts in the kit and I added, um, I added some clearance and Um, what are those? That basically corresponds to three eighths, a three eighths wrench. Sized to match a three eighths socket wrench. So I know what I did later on. Okay. Now what else? How about rent wrench handle length? Wrench handle length. Twenty one. Wrench and width. Four point two. I'll just use uh, seven times print nozzle width. Yeah. And now, what else do I want to add? Wrench thickness. Wrench thickness. And I'll make this multiple of the print layer. So, let's say 10 layers. 10 times print layer height. And I've actually changed my print layer height, but uh, this will be fine for now. Okay. Actually, you know what? I want to, for the wrench thickness, I want to change that to something that corresponds with the thickness of the nut. So you can't see it, but I'm measuring the thickness of a nut with my calipers right now. Um, and I measure 3.5 millimeters. And so I'll double that to make it more convenient. Call that seven millimeters. I'm so funny, seven. Okay. That all, that should do it. So now 
for this, go back into the dimension tool. I'm going to call this 9.8. No, no, I already named this. Uh, wrench width. Okay, now I want to make this a minimum distance. So let's see, how am I going to do that? No, that's not. Tell you what, I'm going to add that circle back. Do it that way. Make a circle, make it coincident with that. Escape out of the circle tool, select that circle, turn it into a construction line. And now set the distance back into the uh, dimension tool. Now uh, the distance between those. Because I already had that dimension. The distance between those will be, let's say, nozzle width, let's go with uh, 2.4. Nozzle width is 6, so that's a multiple of 6. There you go. Okay, 2.1. So this can still rotate. That's why these are blue. So um, escape out of the dimension tool, select this line, horizontal, boom, that fixes that. Okay, so now everything's black. I just want to make this parametric, so I'm going to call that handle length. And that's why it helps to name things, names that make sense and not just variable one, variable two, because in a big project like this, you'll lo quickly lose track of what's what. So always use names that make sense in programming and in CAD. Okay. This is going to be uh, handle width. Okay, now I'm done with my sketch. You know what, I want to do one more thing. So go back into my sketch, edit it. I want to make a, a circle that, so that the, the number 10 machine screw can pass through, but the nut can't pass through. 
In other words, give it a little bit of a lip so that it's easier to keep on the nut. I think that'll be better. Okay. So add a little circle. There we go. Don't need much. Then I'm going to measure a uh, number 10 screw. It's 4.71. So yeah, I want to make it plenty of clearance. So let's give that, uh, I'll go into the dimension tool and I'll make a dimension between those. No, I don't need that. Escape. I'll just go straight to the dimension of the circle. And I'll make that seven. That'll be plenty. All right, there we go. Now I'm done with the sketch. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is create the object. This is where it gets cool. So I'm going to go into my press pull tool, select everything that I'm going to pull to begin with and um, let's see. Yeah, I'll do it that way. Wrench thickness. Okay. And the sketch automatically turns off, but I'll turn it back on. I need it one, for one more operation. And select that, press pull. And uh, let's make that 1.2. No. One 1.5. That'll be five layers. My my new layer height is uh, is 0.3. sketch back off. Now I'll do a few things to strengthen it up. So right here, that's a stress point. And so if I push on this handle a lot, because that's a sharp edge, that puts a lot of stress on the plastic right there. And I could start to create a split and then result in the handle breaking off. So what I'll do for that is I'll create a fillet There we go. Uh, and that makes that nice and strong. Okay. Now these edges. So let me go back into the bullet tool. Uh, I'll do multiple fillets in one uh, in one pass. So I'll add another one, and I'll make these edges be fillets. Fillet, 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 fillet. Okay, and point five is plenty. Actually, yeah. And all I'm doing there is uh, easing stress points. I obviously, obviously still need the corner of the nut to fit in there, uh, but that'll be plenty. In fact, I could probably go 
to one. Yeah, that'll still be plenty. Okay. And now I'll add another. The nice thing about this dialogue is you can have multiple fillets all in one feature with different radiuses. Okay, so here and here. And I'll just make that round. So, wrench handle width uh, divided by two. And that way, that fillet will always make the end of this handle round, even when I change the handle width, because it's a function of the handle width. Okay. There we go. And there's a mini wrench. Now, if I was concerned about the diameter of this hole being a fitting tolerance, and I know that when this 3D prints, I might get a little bit of an edge oozing out here. What I might do to prevent that edge and still have a good fit is I might add a uh, chamfer to that edge, which is basically like a, uh, a bevel. Chamfer is a fancy engineering way of saying bevel. There we go. But in this case, I don't need it. So I am ready. Okay, so now what do we do? We, this is where it gets awesome. We click on make. And I don't want to send it to a 3D print utility. I want to just save the STL file. Okay, so I select it and okay. And here's all the other catapult parts. And I'll call this mini socket wrench. There we go, save. Done. And just like that, we've created a new part. And we'll move it to a nice location. And capture position. And save this version. I added a wrench. done.